dear students in this particular lecture we are going to deal with corrections for damping in ballistic galvanometer we'll also discuss about decrement and logarithmic decrement so let us start last class i showed you that the coil of a ballistic galvanometer under the ballistic condition executes damp harmonic oscillation this damped harmonic oscillation and this damped harmonic oscillation is governed by the equation theta equal to capital a e to the power minus pt sin omega t if you observe carefully then you will see that you have a sin omega t factor here that is a sinusoidal graph you are going to get capital a e to the power minus pt is an exponential term so this sin omega t factor is modulated by a e to the power of minus pt resulting in an oscillation whose amplitude decays exponentially with time for your revision i am showing you the graph so this is the graph like this its amplitude is decreasing exponentially with time the amplitude profile is a e to the power minus pt okay let us move further the time period of the oscillations under this damped harmonic condition that is your damped harmonic oscillation is given by t equals to 2 pi by omega 2 pi by square root of q square minus p square we already define q and p during our last class so we move on to correction for damping in ballistic galvanometer what is correction for damping in ballistic galvanometer why is it necessary it is necessary because we have a relation between charge and ballistic throw what is throw throw means deflection here you have a relation q equals to t by 2 pi cy nba multiplied by theta naught theta naught is the throw or deflection you can see problem is this relation charge deflection relation was obtained by assuming that whatever was the kinetic energy imparted to the coil it was utilized in twisting the suspension through the angle theta naught the entire kinetic energy of the coil was used for twisting the suspension wire through an angle theta naught but in real practice it is not the motion of the coil is damped due to viscosity of air as well as induced current in the coil as well as frame of the coil three things as a result of viscosity and the opposing currents in the coil and the frame there is damping there is decreasing amplitude of the coil therefore the observed throw is smaller than its true value theta naught which would have been observed if the damping were internal entirely absent so if damping were absent you would have observed the value to be theta naught however due to the three factors which i mentioned there is damping and damping reduces the amplitude resulting in lower value than the expected value theta naught 
so we need a correction for that damping factor how to achieve that let theta 1 theta 2 theta 2 theta 3 be the successive throws observed at the end of first second third swings of the coil theta 1 theta 3 are on one side of the rest position of the coil and theta 2 theta 4 on the other let us show you here this is the mean position coil was here the spot was here in fact in your scale after deflection comes it will go here first thereafter it will go at this position thereafter it will come back to this side this will be theta 3 after theta 3 this will be theta 4 after theta 4 this will be your theta 5 so you can easily see that the coil performs damped harmonic oscillation about damped harmonic oscillation and the spot moves right and left as for the oscillation of the coil what is this theta it should be theta naught this should be the true throw in absence of damping you can easily see that theta naught its distance from the mean position is greater than theta one first through which you observe in practice going back to the previous slide this system you will see that amplitude of motion is a e to the power minus pt already shown to you the amplitude is a e to the power minus pt for the damped oscillation if you put a little thought you will see that at t equals to 0 the amplitude is a and the maximum possible value of amplitude in fact from equation 21 is capital a which you can call as theta naught so our theta naught in practice is equal to a that should have been the value if damping were absent anyways let us try to find out what will be the amplitude of successive throws that is theta 1 theta 2 etc if you go back to the you will see that from here to here up to theta 1 you have one quarter vibration then up to theta 2 half vibration then next another half one one quarter vibration then this side one full vibration there are four if you go to this you will see that at t equals to small t equals to t by 4 one quarter vibration your amplitude theta 1 is calculated and when your small t is t by 4 its value is pi by 2 root over q square minus p square from where from this equation 22 when you put t by 4 here then 2 pi by 4 will come and 2 pi by 4 results in pi by 2 root over q square minus p square and your amplitude theta 1 is a e to the power minus pt your amplitude is a e to the power minus pt this small t is substituted as pi by 2 root over q square minus p square therefore your theta 1 is a e to the power minus p pi by 2 root over q square minus p square likewise next theta 2 occurs at t equals to 3t by 4 3 by 4th of a full time period and your amplitude turns out to be theta 2 equals to a e to the power minus 3 p pi by 2 root over q square minus p square 
for t equals to 5 t by 4 theta 3 is a e to the power minus 5 t pi by 2 root over q square minus p square and so on so these are the successive amplitudes of the throw observed theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 you try to calculate theta 1 by theta 2 when you calculate theta 1 by theta 2 you will find that if i divide theta 1 by theta 2 you have minus p pi and minus 3 p pi when i divide then this minus will become plus in the power of the exponential resulting in cancellation and you will get e to the power plus p pi by root over q square minus p square you look carefully you will find that theta 2 by theta 3 also will do e to the power plus p pi by root over q square minus p square here also theta 3 by theta 4 also same if you carry on then simplification will be e e to the power pi by omega because our omega is square root of q square minus p square this p pi by omega we put as lambda and this e to the power lambda we put as d when you take logarithm on both sides with the base e then lambda equals to log d base e and your d is p pi by omega equals to p into capital t by 2 t by 2 is pi by omega that we know from our shm simple harmonic motion what are these d and lambda the ratio of successive amplitudes theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 is constant this constant small d is known as decrement i repeat that your d which we obtain here e to the power lambda was called decrement and log d which we call as lambda this one is called logarithmic decrement in ballistic galvanometer theory fine so we have introduced you to decrement and logarithmic decrement how to calculate this how to get the calculation of logarithmic decrement experimentally i am coming to that but before that let us go and link the true throw theta naught that is this is actually theta naught and this one is your theta one how to link that you will see that theta naught is a is e to the power minus p pi by 2 root over q square minus p square as shown above and i can write it to be a e to the power minus lambda by 2 why because our lambda is equal to this one p pi by q square square root of q square minus p square that makes this quantity lambda by 2 so theta 1 is a e to the power minus lambda by 2 do you know what is theta naught theta naught is in fact a as we showed earlier your theta naught is the maximum possible amplitude so it should be a hence you have the expression from this theta 1 equals to a e to the power minus lambda by 2 you will get theta naught by theta 1 equals to e to the power lambda by 2 e to the power lambda by 2 can be written as 1 plus lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 whole square by factorial 2 it will carry on but our lambda is a small that is why we will take the term up to lambda by 2 only and we will ignore lambda square lambda cube and higher order terms which are very small therefore your theta naught by theta 1 is 1 plus lambda by 2 so our theta naught is theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 hence our equation 6 which was equation 6 this one q equals to t by 2 pi c by n b a into theta naught theta naught was expected to be true through in absence of damping but damping has given us the first throw th as theta 1 and theta 1 is observed on our scale and lambda needs to be calculated so our 
actual expression or true expression for charge should be c by n b a t by 2 pi theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2. Now the question is how to calculate this experimentally the logarithmic decrement. So for this calculating this logarithmic decrement the experimental step is like this the ballistic galvanometer coil is made to oscillate by passing a discharge through it and the successful amplitudes on the right and left are observed thereafter you know theta 1 by theta 2 equals to theta 2 by theta 3 equal to theta 9 by theta 10 equals to theta 10 by theta 11 that can be written as d all are d because the ratio is d and equal to e to the power lambda if you multiply all this that is you do theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3 into theta 3 by theta 4 you will say that inner terms cancel and you are left with theta 1 by theta 11 so if you observe up to 11th throw then theta 1 by theta 11 that ratio will be e to the power 10 lambda theta 1 by theta 11 will be e to the power 10 lambda because e to the power lambda e to the power lambda there will be 10 factors here e to the power 10 lambda you are going to get so from there taking logarithm of this expression lambda 1 by 10 lambda is equal to 1 by 10 log theta 1 by theta 11 and log can be converted into conventional log by the factor 2.3026 so equation 27 gives you the relation between theta 1 and theta 11 and the logarithmic decrement which is your lambda for this of course the student in the laboratory has to observe the first throw and the 11 throw you can do with other throws also you can take throws on the same side that is you can take theta 1 theta 3 theta 5 then theta 1 by theta 3 equals to theta 1 by theta 2 theta 2 cancel theta 1 by theta 3 is e to the power 2 lambda so by observing throw 1 and throw 3 logarithmic decrement can also be calculated so this is the way we will calculate logarithmic decrement so this ends up our theory of ballistic galvanometer once the theory ends up we should also know or should be able to solve some questions of ballistic galvanometer let us see some of the questions of ballistic galvanometer numerical problems one question tells that the current sensitivity of a ballistic galvanometer is 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 9 amperes for a deflection of 1 millimeter on a scale capped at a distance of 1 meter calculate the charge sensitivity of the galvanometer if time period of the coil is 6.2 seconds if you look the problem if you look deeply you will find that for one millimeter the deflection is given 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 9 amperes and scale is at a distance of one meter that is you are linking with the definition of current sensitivity you know charge sensitivity is t by 2 pi into current sensitivity let me show you for repeating charge sensitivity is 2 by t by 2 pi into current sensitivity that already discussed in last classes so your current sensitivity in fact is given here 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 9 amperes per millimeter so just you multiply with t by 2 pi t is 6.2 second and your result comes out by pi equals to 3.14 easy not so difficult but your result will be coulombs per millimeter 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दी सक्सेसिव थ्रोज ऑन सेम साइड ऑफ द मेन पोजिशन फॉर एन ऑसिलेटिंग कॉयल आर दिस वैल्यूज आर गिवेन ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट नाइन एंड ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट एट सेंटीमीटर यू so the students first have to see what are the throws 25 is in fact your first throw on right hand side this so first throw on right hand side is theta 1 next right hand side throw is theta 3 next is theta 5 as per the question these are the throws which are up chop theta 1 25 theta 3 24.9 theta 5 is 24.8 how will you calculate lambda then lambda will be 1 by 4 into 2.303 uh, 26 into log theta 1 by theta 5 base 10 you see this one when you were taking 3 it was 2 here and it was theta 1 by theta 3 if you take one more throw then it will be 4 here and that will automatically become 5 hence it is application of this concept this problem particular problem and the 4 here and this one is 5 put the values of theta 1 and theta 5 calculate This is no unit, zero point zero zero two only. Next, these are the problems which ga ballistic galvanometer deals. Ballistic galvanometer is used to measure charges. This example three comes from such a experiment where ballistic galvanometer was used to measure charge. Let us see the problem. A capacitor charged up to two volts. is discharged through a ballistic galvanometer having time period of 12 seconds and current sensitivity 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 8 ampere per centimeter here capacitor of 2 volts is discharged if the first and 11 throws of the galvanometer are 9.6 cm and 8 cm respectively calculate the capacitance of the capacitor let us proceed step by step first of all you write down the formula for charge q equals to t by 2 pi c by nva theta 1 1 plus lambda by 2 which we already obtained theta 1 is the first throw now you know that if you send a steady current i then a steady deflection phi can also be produced in a ballistic galvanometer and the relation is i equals to c by nva into phi if you have forgotten then we can show you that also previous once we had shown this yes he instead of theta not in fact you have a phi here then q equals to t by 2 pi i by phi c by n v is replaced by i by phi theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 your capital t is 12 second i by phi is equal to 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 8 ampere per centimeter and theta 1 is 9.6 you see theta 1 is 9.6 and other things are given t equals to 12 i by phi is also given current sensitivity this put the values theta 1 and theta 11 are also given you will get the expression for charge after putting the values charge is this and the capacitor was charged to 2 volts then capacitance c equals to q by v 
this farad 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 farad this is not so difficult this is a typical problem this type of problems keep coming in examination this example 3 so we'll wind up with the last problem this problem tells that a standard capacitor of capacitance 0 0.1 microfarad is discharged by a potential difference of 2 uh, is charged by a potential difference of 2 volts it is then discharged through a ballistic galvanometer which gives a linear throw of 20 centimeter on a scale at a distance of 1 meter from the mirror of the ballistic galvanometer calculate the charge sensitiveness of the galvanometer to get the charge sensitiveness of the galvanometer it is a simple problem first you take capacitance of the capacitor which is 0 0.1 microfarad 0 0.1 into 10 to the power minus 6 farad what is potential difference 2 volt what was the charge on the capacitor capacitor charge is q equals to cb multiply and the it is 0 0.2 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb that is the charge on the capacitor plates what is the observed deflection on screen it is 200 millimeter you will also see that the distance is 1 meter here which is our standard distance for measuring charge sensitivity that is why charge per millimeter deflection is this is your charge divided by 200 millimeter this amount of charge is giving 200 millimeter deflection so how much charge is giving 1 millimeter deflection I divide it by 200 so you will get 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb charge for 1 millimeter deflection or you can say 10 to the power minus 3 micro coulomb of charge is required for 1 millimeter deflection and the, your screen is already at 1 meter therefore we can say that the this thing itself is charge sensitivity which is 10 to the power minus 3 micro coulomb per millimeter so with this we wind up this chapter on ballistic galvanometer